In mathematics, a three-sphere is a higher-dimensional analog of a sphere. It consists of the set of points equidistant from a fixed central point in four-dimensional Euclidean space. Just as an ordinary sphere is a two-dimensional surface that forms the boundary of a ball in three dimensions, a three-sphere is an object with three dimensions that forms the boundary of a ball in four dimensions. A three-sphere is an example of a three-manifold definition. In coordinates, a three-sphere with center and radius R is the set of all points in real four-dimensional space such that the three-sphere centered at the origin with radius 1 is called the unit three-sphere and is usually denoted S3. It is often convenient to regard R4 as the space with two complex dimensions or the quaternions. The unit three-sphere is then given by all this description as the quaternions of norm 1, identifies the three-sphere with the verses in the quaternion division ring. Just as the unit circle is important for planar polar coordinates, so the three-sphere is important in the polar view of four space involved in quaternion multiplication. See polar decomposition of a quaternion for details of this development of the three-sphere. This view of the three-sphere is the basis for the study of elliptic space as developed by Georges Lemaitre properties. Elementary properties The three-dimensional cubic hyperarea of a three-sphere of radius r is while the four-dimensional cortic hypervolume is every non-empty. Intersection of a three-sphere with a three-dimensional hyperplane is a two-sphere. As a three-sphere moves through a given three-dimensional hyperplane, the intersection starts out as a point then becomes a growing two-sphere that reaches its maximal size when the hyperplane cuts right through the equator of the three-sphere. Then the two-sphere shrinks again down to a single point as the three-sphere leaves the hyperplane. Topological properties A three-sphere is a compact, connected, three-dimensional manifold without boundary. It is also simply connected. What this means, in the broad sense, is that any loop, or circular path, on the three-sphere can be continuously shrunk to a point without leaving the three-sphere. The Poincaré conjecture, proved in 2003 by Grigory Perelman, provides that the three-sphere is the only three-dimensional manifold with these properties. The three-sphere is homeomorphic to the one-point compactification of, in general, any topological space that is homeomorphic to the three-sphere is called a topological three-sphere. The homology groups of the three-sphere are as follows. H0 and H3 are both infinite cyclic, while high equals 0 for all other indices I. Any topological space with these homology groups is known as a homology three-sphere. Initially Poincaré conjectured that all homology three-spheres are homeomorphic to S3, but then he himself constructed a non-homeomorphic one now known as the Poincaré homology sphere. Infinitely many homology spheres are now known to exist. For example, a den filling with slope 1, n on any knot in the three-sphere gives a homology sphere. Typically these are not homeomorphic to the three-sphere. As to the homotopy groups, we have pi 1 equals pi 2 equals 0, and pi 3 is infinite cyclic. The higher homotopy groups are all finite abelian but otherwise follow no discernible pattern. For more discussion see homotopy groups of spheres. Geometric properties The three-sphere is naturally a smooth manifold, in fact, a closed embedded sub-manifold of R4. The Euclidean metric on R4 induces a metric on the three-sphere giving it the structure of a Riemannian manifold. As with all spheres, the three-sphere has constant positive sectional curvature equal to 1, R2, where R is the radius. Much of the interesting geometry of the three-sphere stems from the fact that the three-sphere has a natural Lie group structure given by quaternion multiplication. The only other spheres with such a structure are the zero sphere and the one sphere. Unlike the two sphere, the three sphere admits non-vanishing vector fields. One can even find three linearly independent and non-vanishing vector fields. 
These may be taken to be any left invariant vector fields forming a basis for the Lie algebra of the three sphere. This implies that the three sphere is parallelizable. It follows that the tangent bundle of the three sphere is trivial. For a general discussion of the number of linear independent vector fields on a n sphere, see the article vector fields on spheres. There is an interesting action of the circle group T on S3 giving the three-sphere the structure of a principal circle bundle known as the Hopf bundle. If one thinks of S3 as a subset of C2, the action is given by the orbit space of this action is homeomorphic to the two-sphere S2. Since S3 is not homeomorphic to S2 times S1, the Hopf bundle is non-trivial. Topological construction. There are several well-known constructions of the three-sphere. Here we describe gluing a pair of three balls and then the one-point compactification. Gluing a three-sphere can be constructed topologically by gluing together the boundaries of a pair of three balls. The boundary of a three ball is a two-sphere, and these two two-spheres are to be identified. That is, imagine a pair of three balls of the same size, then superpose them so that their two spherical boundaries match, and let matching pairs of points on the pair of two spheres be identically equivalent to each other. In analogy with the case of the two-sphere, the gluing surface is called an equatorial sphere. Note that the interiors of the three balls are not glued to each other. One way to think of the fourth dimension is as a continuous real-valued function of the three-dimensional coordinates of the three ball, perhaps considered to be temperature. We take the temperature to be zero along the gluing two sphere and let one of the three balls be hot and let the other three ball be cold. The hot three ball could be thought of as the upper hemisphere and the cold three ball could be thought of as the lower hemisphere. The temperature is highest, lowest at the centers of the two three balls. This construction is analogous to a construction of a two sphere performed by gluing the boundaries of a pair of discs. A disc is a two ball, and the boundary of a disc is a circle. Let a pair of discs be of the same diameter. Superpose them and glue corresponding points on their boundaries. Again one may think of the third dimension as temperature. Likewise, we may inflate the two sphere, moving the pair of discs to become the northern and southern hemispheres. One point compactification after removing a single point from the two sphere, what remains is homeomorphic to the Euclidean plane. In the same way, removing a single point from the three sphere yields three dimensional space. An extremely useful way to see this is via stereographic projection. We first describe the lower dimensional version. Rest the south pole of a unit two sphere on the xy plane in three space. We map a point of the sphere to the plane by sending to the intersection of the line with the plane. Stereographic projection of a three-sphere maps to three-space in the same manner. A somewhat different way to think of the one-point compactification is via the exponential map, returning to our picture of the unit two-sphere sitting on the Euclidean plane. Consider a geodesic in the plane, based at the origin, and map this to a geodesic in the two-sphere of the same length, based at the south pole. Under this map all points of the circle of radius are sent to the north pole. Since the open unit disk is homeomorphic to the Euclidean plane, this is again a one-point compactification. The exponential map for three-sphere is similarly constructed. It may also be discussed using the fact that the three-sphere is the Lie group of unit quaternions coordinate systems on the three-sphere. The four Euclidean coordinates for S3 are redundant since they are subject to the condition that, as a three-dimensional manifold one should be able to parameterize S3 by three coordinates. Just as one can parameterize the two-sphere using two coordinates, due to the non-trivial topology of S3 it is impossible to find a single set of coordinates that cover the entire space. Just as on the two-sphere, one must use at least two coordinate charts. Some different choices of coordinates are given below. Hyperspherical coordinates It is convenient to have some sort of hyperspherical coordinates on S3 in analogy to the usual spherical coordinates on S2. 
One such choice, by no means unique, is to use where where psi and theta run over the range 0 to pi, and phi runs over 0 to 2 pi. Note that, for any fixed value of psi, theta and phi parameterize a two-sphere of radius sin, except for the degenerate cases when psi equals 0 or pi, in which case they describe a point. The round metric on the three sphere in these coordinates is given by and the volume formed by these coordinates have an elegant description in terms of quaternions. Any unit quaternion Q can be written as a versa. Q equals e tau psi equals cos psi plus tau sin psi where tau is a unit imaginary quaternion, that is, a quaternion that satisfies tau 2 equals minus 1. This is the quaternionic analog of Euler's formula. Now the unit imaginary quaternions all lie on the unit 2 sphere in MH so any such tau can be written. Tau equals cos theta i plus sin theta cos phi j plus sin theta sin phi k with tau in this form. The unit quaternion Q is given by Q equals e tau psi equals x0 plus x1 i plus x2 j plus x3 k where the x's are as above. When Q is used to describe spatial rotations, it describes a rotation about tau through an angle of 2 psi. Hopf coordinates for unit radius Another choice of hyperspherical coordinates makes use of the embedding of S3 in C2. In complex coordinates C2 we write this could also be expressed in R4 as here eta runs over the range 0 to pi 2, and she 1 and she 2 can take any values between 0 and 2 pi. These coordinates are useful in the description of the three sphere as the Hopf bundle for any fixed value of eta between 0 and pi 2. The coordinates parameterize a two-dimensional torus. Rings of constant Xi1 and Xi2 above form simple orthogonal grids on the tori. See image to write. In the degenerate cases, when eta equals 0 or pi 2, these coordinates describe a circle. The round metric on the three sphere in these coordinates is given by and the volume formed by to get the interlocking circles of the Hopf vibration. Make a simple substitution in the equations above in this case eta, she 1 specify which circle, and she 2 specifies the position along each circle. One round trip of either she 1 or she 2 causes you to make one full circle of both limbs of the torus. Stereographic coordinates Another convenient set of coordinates can be obtained via stereographic projection of S3 from a pole onto the corresponding equatorial R3 hyperplane. For example, if we project from the point we can write a point P in S3 as where U equals is a vector in R3 and U2 equals U12 plus U22 plus U32. In the second equality above, we have identified P with a unit quaternion and U equals U1I plus U2J plus U3K with a pure quaternion. The inverse of this map takes P equals in S3 to we could just as well have projected from the point, in which case the point P is given by where V equals is another vector in R3. The inverse of this map takes P to note that the U coordinates are defined everywhere but and the V coordinates everywhere but. This defines an atlas on S3 consisting of two coordinate charts or patches, which together cover all of S3. Note that the transmission function between these two charts on their overlap is given by and vice versa. Group structure. When considered as the set of unit quaternions, S3 inherits an important structure, namely that of quaternionic multiplication. Because the set of unit quaternions is closed under multiplication, S3 takes on the structure of a group. Moreover, since quaternionic multiplication is smooth, S3 can be regarded as a real Lie group. It is a non-abelian, compact Lie group of dimension 3. When thought of as a Lie group S3 is often denoted SP or U. It turns out that the only spheres that admit a Lie group structure are S1, thought of as the set of unit complex numbers, and S3, the set of unit quaternions. One might think that S7, the set of unit octonions, would form a Lie group, but this fails since octonion multiplication is non-associative. 
The octonionic structure does give S7 one important property, parallelizability. It turns out that the only spheres that are parallelizable are S1, S3, and S7. By using a matrix representation of the quaternions, H, one obtains a matrix representation of S3. One convenient choice is given by the Pauli matrices. This map gives an injective algebra homomorphism from H to the set of 2 times 2 complex matrices. It has the property that the absolute value of a quaternion Q is equal to the square root of the determinant of the matrix image of Q. The set of unit quaternions is then given by matrices of the above form with unit determinant. This matrix subgroup is precisely the special unitary group SU. Thus, S3 as a Lie group is isomorphic to SU. Using our Hopf coordinates we can then write any element of SU in the form another way to state this result is if we express the matrix. Representation of an element of SU is a linear combination of the Pauli matrices. It is seen that an arbitrary element can be written as the condition that the determinant of U is plus 1 implies that the coefficients are constrained to lie on a three-sphere. In literature, in Edwin Abbott Abbott's Flatland, published in 1884, and in Sphereland, a 1965 sequel to Flatland by Diane Iceberger, the three-sphere is referred to as an oversphere, and a four-sphere is referred to as a hypersphere. Writing in the American Journal of Physics, Mark A. Peterson describes three different ways of visualizing three spheres and points out language in the Divine Comedy that suggests Dante viewed the universe in the same way.